Welcome, everybody. We're pretty excited to be here. How about a warm round of applause for our two guests, Brittany and Brooke Henderson, today? Keep clapping. I did that too early. Keep clapping. Fantastic. Come on over, Brooke. Hey, Chris. Give me a little more, baby. I don't know. Just keep doing it till it's loud enough. Hey, Brittany. Awesome stuff. So we want to thank, first of all, we want to uh, welcome the two girls. You can tell there's a little excitement in the air. Girls, these are all kids in our Junior Golf Initiative, members at clubs and uh, young wannabe superstars. So they look up to you guys quite a bit. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Awesome to have you both here. And uh, we're going to have some fun this morning. Kids, uh, think of a question, okay? We're going to pick a few of you to ask a question at some point, okay? Everybody good with that? You going to have it or are you going to give me the the kind of uh, nothing face that I'm getting right now? Are we going to get something? Okay, think of something anyway. So, girls, let's start. Uh, you guys, when did you get home? Uh, yesterday around noon. So That's not bad. You know, if you'd have missed the cut on Friday, you got home <laughs> early and rested. But great job, uh, Brooke. We're so proud of you. And Brittany, uh, you two. We know you guys are a team. And uh, eight top tens in a row. Uh, yeah, that's right. I think actually it was nine. Nine? Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's eight. I think you're wrong, Brooke. I think it's eight. So, um, what a great start, an incredible start. I know when uh, when Mr. Wilson set this up to have you guys here today, you were, I think, mid-40s in the world, and now you're number five in the world. Does that freak you out a bit? A little bit. It's pretty crazy to think two years ago I was way over 200, and like you said, just not too long ago, over 40, and now I'm number five. Amazing. What's the secret, Brittany? It's definitely the good caddying. <laughs> I think so, too, yeah. <laughs> There's the setup. There's the setup, Brittany. There you go, right there. And the Olympics are how many days away? What's your plan for the Olympics, you guys? Uh, we're super excited for the Olympics. Uh, unfortunately, we won't get down for the opening ceremonies, but hopefully get a few practice rounds in and get down to Rio and experience uh, the whole Have thing. Have you been down yet? Have you guys been down yet? We haven't, but the national team coaches. I know done. Tristan stayed at my house. He was here for the Ottawa Golf Expo and stayed at my place really? and he, the day before he flew down there. Oh, wow. And uh, he said he was, uh, Canada's looking for every edge, right? They didn't have a lot of access to the Olympic course, so Tristan was bringing a bottle of Crown Royal down to give to the <laughs> greenskeeper to try to get more access to the course. So <laughs> I think that's good old Canadian ingenuity right there. So, um, I, I guess, what are your expectations for the Olympics? So how does it work? No country can have more than how many uh, participants? Uh, no more than four, um, but most countries only have two. That's pretty exciting. So if you think about it, number five player in the world. She's going to be one of our great gold medal hopefuls, everybody. That's going to be pretty neat. <laughs> I know. Awesome. All right, let's get uh, ask some questions for the kids here. So when did you guys start playing golf? I started when I was three years old, uh, and Britt started when she was about nine. So we both kind of grew up together and started playing golf at the same time. Yeah, I know you guys. Brittany, you were a real superstar around here as a youngster and played in our Junior Challenge Tour, our PJ of Ottawa Junior Challenge Tour, and you did too, Brooke. I remember you, Brooke, at Prescott pushing your pull cart and the handle was about right here. You are <laughs> wandering down. I think you shot 76 that day, if I'm not mistaken, as a 10-year or 11-year-old, so something crazy. Uh, what, what, do you what, can, what advice can you give to the kids about what they should be doing right now or what it takes to get to the the highest level, and, and Brittany, we should say to everybody, I mean, you're a LPGA level player. You're right there as well, so you're doing an awesome job. What do we say to the kids? What do they need to do to get to the next level? Uh, I mean, I, I just loved golf, and I always had fun, and I was out on the course um, all day, every day, just because I, I loved it. Um, and, you know, I just have fun every day. I'm living the dream that I've always wanted to live, playing on the LPGA Tour and, and getting out on different golf courses all around the world and, and being able to travel with my sister so yeah, that's awesome. um, just you know enjoy it and have fun and push yourself to be better play a lot now how much uh, Brittany would you have practiced as a kid growing up did you play a lot did you practice a lot did you take a lot of lessons how did you get to where you are um, I did a lot of both I did a lot of practicing um, and it doesn't have to be anything formal you know get out there have fun try some different shots you know hit some cuts hit some draws hit some low ones hit some flop shots you know, just do whatever and then go in and have a snack. That's what we did. Yeah. Um, I'm not even sure, really. We haven't been back home here since Christmas time. Um, wow. 
but so nice of you to come out here. A round of applause for them taking time out of their rest week, everybody. So, Brittany, your aspirations. Are you guys a team for life here? Are you going to do this for a year and get your sister's feet under her and then go back after it yourself? What are your goals? Yeah, well, I'm not really too sure still. Um, at the start of the season, we're just trying to help Rick out, get her off the best start possible. And it's going okay. You're doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's just see what happens from there. What do you think is the secret to her meteoric success? I mean, uh, I mean, we could say it's physical ability. It's clear that there's lots there, but what is it? Is it being on the road with you, maybe? Do you guys have a routine you work on? Is it the team around you? Is it your parents being so great with you? What, what do you think is the secret to the success? Um, I think it takes a team. I think um, growing up, our dad was great. Our mom's great, too, but <laughs> our dad... Well, you said dad first. Our dad uh, really, really coached us and really, really led us down a, a good path. And just not only golf, but all different sports just really helped us have a well-rounded childhood and then I think now it's her and I on the road together and our parents coming in whenever they can too I think I think you would agree that it's it's just really hard to do it by yourself and that's one of the reasons Especially at 18. yeah right. yeah and that's one of the reasons I really want to help her out this year because um, it's just impossible to do by yourself Oh, it's fantastic. You're a, obviously a mentor and a role model for Brooke. She may not tell you that, but it's pretty <laughs> clear to me. And your dad. Are your parents here yet? I think they're coming a little later, right? Uh, yeah, they might come down. They might come down. Okay, good stuff. So uh, we talked about Tristan Mullally, the Team Canada coach. Mm -hmm. He's still the fellow working with you on your game a little bit. And what are you trying to do right now? We're going to start hitting some balls in a few minutes here, but what are you trying to do right now with your golf game? And where do you think you are out of 10? And, uh, well, just that. Uh, my game's in a good spot right now. You know, I'm hitting it pretty well. Um, the last few weeks I've actually started to hit it better and haven't really gotten the results that I've been looking for um, the last two weeks. But before that, you know, nine straight top tens in a row against the best players in the world is something that I'm proud of and hopefully we can do later in the summer. But I'm probably about an eight out of ten right now of where I want to be. Um, and every day just trying to take my swing up a little bit um, and just get a little bit stronger. Tristan was down a few weeks ago in Texas when we were yeah. playing there. So we worked uh, just being a little bit more upright um, and balanced. For me, I'm not too technical, but balance and posture are really important. And what's the, the, the strongest part of your game? Both of you, we'd ask that question. What's the strongest part of your game, Brittany? Hmm, I, don't, I don't know. I think her short game's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. solid. <laughs> and yours, Brooke? Uh, I'd say long game. Yeah? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, why don't we get you guys to warm up a little bit here. Hit as many as you like. We're just going to chat, okay? We'll pour some balls out, and you guys can hit as many as you like. Brooke, we're going to expect a couple of those 200 and whatever. How many? How far do you hit it, Brooke? Uh, I'm averaging 270 this year. So. That's <laughs> awesome. Is that it? That's it right Gee now. Whiz. So whatever you want to hit, guys, little half shots, and if you just want to talk, that's fine with us, but... Uh, That'd be fun. Everyone wants, wants to see you swing a little bit, hit a few shots. So, Brittany, what's your uh, what's your typical day like? How are you waking Brooke up in the morning? Are you uh, you guys get to the course four hours before you start? Do you get there? What's, um, your, what's your typical day out on the road? Brooke likes about an hour and a half warm up, maybe a little less. Yeah. Um, but we usually get to the course a little earlier than that, just so we can eat breakfast or lunch and stretch a little bit. Yeah. And then starts the warm up an hour and a half, an hour and twenty. So what about when you have a seven a.m. tea time? What time are you guys setting the alarm? <laughs> oh, sometimes we don't. Yeah, we don't give ourselves an hour and a half on those times. <laughs> <laughs> no, like you're to supposed sleep. to tell all the kids that you get up really early and do a workout. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, we do still have to get up really early. There's a few for four thirty. Yeah. Wake up calls. And what about the food challenges or the nutrition stuff on the course? Are you, restaurant fruit's difficult. So how do you guys eat well and? And how do you manage to work out when you're out on the golf course? Um, you have to be pretty diligent about it. Um, the golf courses usually that run the tournaments have really good food there for yeah. us. So it's really just finding a good place to eat supper. And it's sort of hard to stay away from the fast food places. But we try to eat as healthy as we can. Go for it. Am I going this way? You're going out on the fairway there, yeah. Right there. Anywhere you want to go, Brooke, is pretty much my answer to you. <laughs> We've got a, an army of great volunteers who will run around and pick up all the golf balls. So 
just loosen up, hit a few guys. Uh, so, I, I guess you've got help a little bit. How are you finding the hotels you want to stay in, Brittany? How are you finding the Thank you. the rental cars? <laughs> 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 the only guy not clapping is the greenskeeper after the divot on the 10 D, but we'll deal with him later. We'll deal, that's okay. You don't have to pick them clean. Go ahead and hit them, Brooke. Okay. So how are you finding your hotels? How are you finding cars? How are you finding all that stuff? Yeah, it's definitely a lot of planning in advance. Um, we try to sort of divide the responsibility. I try to um, I try to book most of the hotels and stuff for Brooke so she can just concentrate on playing golf. And, and is that done through the LPGA? Do they have recommendations or do they, you know, do Elena Sharp, I know, has helped you guys out a little bit. Yeah. She has a little more experience on tours. So how are you finding the right spots? And um, Yeah, LPGA comes out with recommendations, but then um, you can choose to do that or not um, and then usually just book it on our own and practice rounds are you uh, like bones phil mickelson's bones are you out there getting uh, yardages from everywhere or how are you working that out yeah pretty much yeah <laughs> yeah um i try to pretty much laser everything um and they provide you with books so you do your own book completely um no they always have a yardage book for us so it they make it pretty easy but you usually always have to double check it and yeah. a lot of the time you have to put a lot more detail into the greens because a lot of time there's slopes and undulations and you have to be sort of in the right area so. Brooke, are you having trouble with uh are you ha you can hit a few if you like Brittany, or if not uh, it's up to you uh, are you having trouble with adjusting to different grasses and green speeds is it a big factor out there it's yeah it's a huge factor um I, almost every week because we're traveling so much there's different is everywhere. Like uh, earlier this year, we were in Florida, which is Bermuda grass, and then we went over to Australia and Singapore, and then all over the U.S. It's all yeah. different. Depending How do you on like Bermuda? Place. Have you adjusted to it? Uh, I I like bent way better, yeah. so I'm happy to be back home. Yeah, nice soil too, huh? The nice yeah. rich turf. I know you take a real divot. Yeah, it's beautiful. How was it in Texas? Was it super windy? Um, Texas wasn't too bad, but the week before, two weeks before Hawaii. Yeah crazy wind and then San Francisco. Yeah, wow, you're seeing the world. Huh? What's, the, what's the coolest pl uh, place you two have been? Uh, I think we both really enjoyed Singapore. It was um, a really cool, really cool city. Um, we got to see a little bit because we stayed right down. Yeah. Uh, and we were able to walk around a little bit. And it was about a 40 minute drive to the course, so we saw a lot that way too. That's neat. That's really great. All right, hit a few guys. Uh, Brooke, let's see a couple of big ones here at some point. Any uh, kids have questions? Do we have any questions from the gallery? Look at those smartphones. What a world we live in now. Look at the girls. The girls are over here. Everybody's looking at their smartphones. Pretty amazing balance. Oh, is this a setting or what? Look at that, everyone. Unbelievable. Beautiful, Brittany. I think a little closer to center than your sisters, as a matter of fact. Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe we should get a little challenge match going. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brooke, you talked about a little bit about uh, working on posture and balance. So, what specifically are you working on? Um, well, big thing is, last few weeks I was really on my toes. Yeah. So, trying to get it back to the balls of my feet. Um, Thing, is that a habit? Is that something you have to work at a lot, or is it just something Tristan noticed this time? Uh, no, since I was about 14, we've been working on balance and posture. <laughs> and so a lot of like one-legged swings and just making sure things are perfect. But all my students tell me they should fix it at about six or seven balls, you know? <laughs> is that better? Is that better? After about five or six balls. That's good to hear. So do we have a question yet? You guys going to help me out at all? Who's got one? Anybody? Yes, sir. Young Kiefer Bulow. How are you, buddy? Uh, yeah. I'm great. What's your question, pal? <coughs> How do you stay confident under pressure? How do you Ooh. stay confident under pressure? What an awesome question that is. That is a really good question. Um, I think it's a challenge that everybody kind of deals with, but every week out on tour when you get good finishes, um, it definitely helps with your confidence and, and boosts you. Um, but you know, a lot of people ask about like cameras and fans and uh, like you're on TV almost every shot you hit. So it's kind of nervous. You can be nervous if you think like, oh, somebody can hit, watch me hit a bad shot. But you can also think, what if I hit this amazing shot? Awesome, Britt. And they're gonna, they're gonna remember it. They're gonna Butter know draw. me. 
And why be afraid? Because it's like up to you and it, you want to make par, you want to make birdie, so do it for yourself and don't worry about the people around you. Great advice and play with a smile, everybody. Yes. You know, it's interesting, Brooke, right? You've always looked so happy and Brittany too on the golf course. Everybody notice her shoes that say, I love golf? Get a picture of those. Those are cool, guys. Thank you. But uh, you have to love the game, right, to play well. So it's all about being positive. And who's uh, who have you who have you spent time with, Brooke, out on tour a little bit, or Brittany, you too? Who are your best friends out there right now? Um, Elena Sharp, who's a Canadian player, who's been out there for I think this is her eleventh year. Eleven years. So um, she's very experienced and. She's really taken us under her wing and really helped us a lot. Like, um, a lot of players are really just focused on themselves, which you totally understand out there, yeah. you know, but um, she's really helped us out and giving us her yardage book, which is really sacred to a lot of people. They yeah, don't, they don't share, right? yeah. they don't share this information. They've taken years to gather um, and different things for on course information and just where to stay and where to eat. and. Um, She's been she's been awesome. That's yeah. really cool. I know she's playing better now too. Oh, here comes the big stick. Uh, yeah. For those of you who don't know, 48 inch length. And actually, at our first tee today, everybody's going to get a chance to hit a driver with uh, Brooke Specs. But 48 inches long is is quite something, you know. So, all right, Brooke, come on, let's see this thing. Oh, first stretchy. one might not be. Like oh, it's going to so. be awesome, Brooke. <laughs> Brooke, how do you handle pressure on a first tee? That's just <laughs> the question. Go for it. All right. Pretty excited to see this. Ooh, Hi, Sean. One more. One more. Yeah. That's okay. A bunch more. <laughs> I'm gonna stay here all day and watch you hit those. Awesome. Everybody heard? If you got here a little bit late, 270 yards is Brooks' average out there, which is pretty darn long. What are you working on, Brittany, in your swing? I know you don't have much. It must be so right. difficult for you to be helping your sister and caddying and try. First of all, you're probably thinking, I, I want, wish I was out here some days, you yeah, know, and then you don't have time to practice enough. So what are you working on in your swing? Um, well, I guess just what Brooke said. Right now, I'm just trying to hit the center of the club face, and you're always trying to have good posture and good balance and good rhythm in your swing. Yeah. Um, and you get to practice at all, like your clubs aren't on the road with you, so no. you can steal your sisters and hit a few shots, what do you do? Um, occasionally, they're pretty strict with caddies that aren't allowed to practice on the range though. So. That's weird, yeah, yeah, so it's your sister. And I know. Does she send you to the caddy <laughs> pen, or can you go in the clubhouse and have lunch? Sometimes I'm in the caddy pen, I don't know. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you get your payback at night, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty neat. Yeah, it's good. The only time... Um, I really get the urge on the range. I love, yeah. I love yeah. the range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A more for us. Oh. I don't know, Brooke. That's a little off center, that last one. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful tee shots. Any more questions from the kids? Yeah, We're anything gonna, you'd like to see. Yeah, Julian, up top there. Let's, uh, yeah, if you want to see them do anything specific. Again, Julian? Uh, I'll. <laughs> So the question is, it's a great question, do you have a handful or a few mental thoughts going into a tournament to keep your mojo kind of moving along? Yeah, my mental game is definitely one of the strengths um, uh, of my game. But the secret is, I don't, I don't know, um, I think everybody's kind of searching for it too. Um, yeah, I don't know, but definitely this, this year, the nine straight top tens that took a lot of, a lot of focus um, every single week and you know every course is different so you gotta really set up a good game plan and, and Brick does an awesome job of you mentioned it earlier of just yeah. going around and, and getting a game plan and knowing where to hit shots and knowing where your misses are um, and I don't know do you know do you have any secrets me um, no I think it's just you know taking one shot at a time you know, you have to just, I think you just have to play the golf course, no matter no matter what course it is, if it's really tough or if it's a course where you can get a lot of birdies, I think you just have to have a plan and try to focus on each shot at a time and at the end of the day, add it up and see, see where you are. Yeah, and maybe the biggest thing is just no fear. 
ever. And, and how do you do that? That's easy to say, but how do you do that? Because there's a lot of kids here yeah. about to play in <laughs> golf tournaments. You said, uh, you know, I think pressure is not even a bad thing because you can go and test yourself. You got to stay covered. But how do you get rid of the fear? That's a big thing to tell kids. Yeah, that that is. Um, I guess just have fun and, and believe you can do it um, because you can. And yeah, I don't know. It's easy to step onto a tee and, and see all the trouble and um, think like, oh, I don't want to make a bogey. I don't want to make a double. Or I want to shoot a really good score today and kind of put too much pressure on yourself. But you just go out and, and hit one shot at a time and, and just focus on that one thing and, you know, just why do you think you're going to shoot 80 when you could shoot 69? Good stuff. Uh, we had another question too. I saw another hand. Do we have another question? Yeah, Maddie. Um, what's your routine when you practice? What is your routine when you practice? So, do you line up every shot? Do you put alignment rods on the ground? Do you just kind of hit and get loose? What's your kind of your system? Uh, it kind of depends on what I'm working on that day. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty easy going, so I'll hit to different, a whole bunch of different targets. So if there's eight different flags on the on the range, I'll hit to different ones. Um, a lot of times we hit to certain distances, so Britt will run out and put things down at 50 yards, 60 yards, and I'll practice that way. Um, biggest thing is I like to work the ball, and I like to see different shot shapes and stuff like that. So if I can practice those on the range, I like to do that as well. And what's your strength? The draw, I'm assuming, or is it a cut? Uh, draw. Draw? What about you, Brittany? Yeah, I've always, I've always drawn. You're both drawers, and why is that? Did you do it purposely? Do you do it with your grip a little bit, your setup, or do you just feel like, you know, that's the way your eye saw the course and your dad taught you, and that's what you did. Why do you think you both draw the ball? Um, well, I had to draw with my driver to get To copy to Brit, too. Yes. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm sure when you were um, 10 and 9, that was the case. But to get a little extra distance off the tee, I had to draw, um, and then it's kind of worked into my other irons and other clubs as well. Good stuff. And you, Brittany? Mine was just coincidence. Yeah? I, I, that's just how I hit it. When I was younger, I had a really strong grip, um, but it wasn't because I, I planned it. Yeah. It's just how I gripped it. Yeah. Um, so it just sort of worked with what was natural for me. When did you decide uh, that this was going to be a life for you? When did you think you were good enough, Brittany, to make it a career? And I know your partnership with your sister, which is so admirable, is in the middle of you know, your career right now, but when did you decide? What age were you when you said, you know, I want to do this for a living or I can do this for a living? Um, I was lucky to play pretty well when I was pretty young, and I think that sort of sparked the dream Yeah. Um, for me when I was uh, probably 12. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think um, for me I had that dream pretty young, and then it's always something you sort of work towards. It's not something you necessarily you know this is going to be it, but yep. you work hard and you see if you can, if you can do it. And I think you just you go, you treat, keep trying as long as you, um, as long as it's what you want to do and as it's what you love to do, and you, th and you think you have the talent to do it. What's the most different thing from what you guys imagined? You probably, you, I know you laid in your beds in Smith Falls and dreamed about being on tour or dreamed about traveling the world or playing golf for a living. What's the most different thing than you thought? Most this is kind of different. You probably didn't yeah. think of press conferences and agents and all the other stuff, but what's better than you thought it would be and what's a, 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 not a bit of a bummer? <laughs> don't say this. Please don't say this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anything else you want, but I'll give you five bucks if you don't say this. <laughs> um, that is a tough question, but I think you do receive like a lot of attention, and especially if you have success early. Um, there's a lot of demands on your time, um, and which is awesome. You know, you get to talk to a whole bunch of TV stations and radio stations, and everybody back home uh, tells you they see you in newspapers and online everywhere, um, which is really cool. You just gotta make sure that you really focus on on your game because that's what got you there. Yeah. Um, and the most fun thing? The most fun thing. Uh, I think just playing golf every day. Watching your sister put out those targets? Yeah. <laughs> I make her win sometimes. <laughs> and what about you, Brett? Best thing and uh, most difficult thing about your whole setup right now? That's not the best spot for the photographers to stand. <laughs> just saying. Although she can hit some flop shots for us. Uh, Brett, what do you think is the most difficult thing on the uh, 
about the whole lifestyle. It must be time management. It's got to be I think possible. It is. So, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think it's just, um, I think that's, that's why the team is so important because she needs to focus on playing golf, yeah. you know, and it takes so much focus and so much energy um, for her to do that. And I think if I'm able to help her plan things, if I'm able to get the game plan for the course, then all she has to do is really focus and, and hit the shot. And I think that's leads back to one of the things about how do you get rid of fear. It's just focus. It's just knowing what you want to do. And it's not being like, oh, I have to do this. It's like, no, if you hit it offline, you can still recover. Yeah. But just really focus and on the one shot at hand. When did you think, uh, uh-oh, my hands are full with my young sister. What age were you two when you went out and played and said, yikes, she's going to be pretty good too? Yeah. Um, I definitely bragged her about her a little bit, um, probably starting in college, when I was in college, so yeah. she was just 14 or so. Um, and where did you go, uh, Britt? Where would you go to university? Coastal Carolina University in South Carolina. Dustin Johnson, right? Yes. Yeah, he's a grad from there as well. How was that experience? Maybe tell our kids. A lot of them have dreams of golf scholarships. What was that yes. experience like for you? Um, it was the best. Um, I think for me, being able to go to school in the South um, where I could play all year round was really, really awesome since I've been used to being up here where we get six months or, or so. And I think yeah. having the team atmosphere um, is something really cool, you know, because golf's always individual. You're always yeah. out there by yourself, but then when you get to be in college with your team, and it's just you feel like you're part of something, and you feel like you're not only playing like for yourself, but you're also playing for. And players. when did you start thinking about that? So we've got kids here from nine years old up to seventeen. At what point did you start thinking a scholarship would be pretty neat? Um, I was probably twelve when I started to think it was a possibility for me, but I think it's different for everybody. One of the greatest women in the world, um, Annika Sorenstam, didn't even start playing golf until she was 14. Yeah, amazing. And um, didn't really even get good until she was in college. So I think it's different for everybody when you start to get good. And what about you, Brooke? I know you signed a letter, or close to signing a letter with Florida, and then figured, boy, I'm doing pretty well, so I'll continue. Was that difficult? Did you really want to go to university, or, or your dream was to get to tour? What? How did you get through that process? Yeah, when Britt started getting <coughs> oh, excuse me, a ton of letters from universities all over the United States, you know, like stacks like this every day, I was like, whoa, I want to I be like her and I want to go to the States on a scholarship. Um, and we talked about the University of Florida, the Gators, and I kind of fell in love. <laughs> I already painted my whole room orange and green <laughs> when I was in grade 8, and I received my first letter from them when I was in grade 8, and I was like, oh man, I want to go, I want to be their captain, I want to play four years there, and everything, and I actually still, since I have been, I guess, eight years old, roughly, I have always been wanting to go to the Florida Gators, and I had this on my bag until maybe last year. You could use a wash. You could use a wash, Brooke. Well, it's good luck. <laughs> so I like it. And so I always keep it with me. I think Dave Wilson's happy that's in the bag, <laughs> not on the bag. Yeah. <laughs> but although I didn't go there, I still feel like I was kind of a part of it um, once I verbally committed. And I think it's a, like a huge goal and a huge accomplishment to go play for university. That's great. That's awesome stuff. All right, uh, Brooke, let's hit that big stick out. Let's hit a few. Okay. Everybody's got the cameras clicking when you're ripping the basic. Brittany, your swing is beautiful. Get back out there. Thank no, uh, Brooke, I'm not trying to steal her. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see this big dog here. So this is the G-Series driver that all our players are getting fitted for today and uh, in the next few weeks. So guys, I, this is what I expect of all of you, all our <laughs> players in the tournament. Brittany, when did you play your last round of golf? Um, Gee whiz, it's hard to answer. Yeah, I really have to think about this. I think I played a couple of nine hole rounds about a month and a half ago. Gee so. whiz. On the road? Yes, Out yeah. Of Brooks bag, or did yeah. you get, how'd you do that? Yeah, Brooks bag. Yeah, it was um, after the, the first major of the year. So, awesome. Yeah, during the Masters week, so it was like, should I go play or should I watch the you. Masters? <laughs> Listen, it's got to be hard for you. Great. Well, Jordan Spieth, did you watch Jordan Spieth at the Masters? What do you think of that, Brooke? What do you think of that little debacle on 12? 
Yeah. How, how would you handle a situation like that? That's a tough one to rebound from. That is extremely tough to rebound. I think he did a pretty good job. Yeah, a couple um, of birdies right afterwards, right? <laughs> yeah. Pretty cool. And when things happen like that, it's really hard to think that you're still capable of doing things. It kind of really sets you down, but um, like he did a good job, but he almost could have still come back and won it. Yeah, if, amazing. Yeah. Very so. resilient, huh? And I, I kind of think of you two as being like his team, you know? You guys have your team, you talk about your partnership, and all he ever talks about is his team, right? He and his caddy and his coach and everybody, they they work a plan out, right? It sounds like you guys are doing the same thing. Hey everybody, watch Brittany's posture here. Brittany, hit one for us. Okay. You can. Now Brittany's played two nine holes in the last four months, guys, or even longer than that. But watch how beautiful the posture is and awesome stuff. Both of these girls look like absolute world-class athletes over the golf ball. Beautiful. Awesome stuff. Really great. What's your launch angle, Brooke? Uh. I don't know. About that? <laughs> <laughs> it's about that. I think it's about that. Okay. That's awesome. Any more questions, kids? What's your shaft flex? What is your shaft flex, uh, Brooke? Uh, that's a good question, too. Brit? Yeah. Brit, what's her shaft flex? <laughs> stiff. Stiff. Men's stiff. Yeah, I think uh, you're a field player, right, Brooke? I get that impression. There's not a lot of hooking you up to nodes and scientific mats and things. You just go out there and play the game. That's right. You swing like a real athlete. I think that's the best way to play the game, right? Yeah, I like it. And I've kind of been in the same swing since I was like three years old. And just, yeah. and just kind of figure out. Working okay. Yeah. Working okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's give a round of applause, everybody. We're going to wrap this up.